Birmingham's fountains are on a go slow thanks to the freezing temperatures and many businesses are blaming the go slow by rail workers for a drop in trade. It's the fourth day this week trains have been disrupted by strikes. Belinda Downing sings at the German Christmas market most years. She says numbers of visitors are definitely down because of the strikes, but she's sympathetic to those on the picket lines. I think that everybody deserves a decent wage. I was a nurse for over 40 years, and I don't like the fact that nurses are um, obviously striking, but in this climate, everybody has to look out for themselves. There's been a 15% fall in business this week compared to last, according to the retail data company Springboard. At the Piccadilly Arcade next to the Christmas market, the drop-off in trade has been even bigger for some. Smithsonia has been here for 40 years. Now the owner is thinking of shutting up shop for good. This was uh, traditionally the, the busiest Saturday of the year, and that has been the case for probably the last 30 years. Um, so. We've already experienced train, train strikes uh, during the week, uh, which has had a big impact on us. Um, our figures are down by 35%. And if those three weeks that we have before Christmas don't happen to that same extent, it does actually endanger the business and the future of the business. And it was people like Mike Ferguson that the business secretary had in mind when he warned against what he called a 1970s cycle of strikes. I just think that actually if you work uh, on the railways, it would be nice if the offer that's on the table, which now includes a lot of money in back pay, was actually put to you. But the union bosses uh, are preventing that from happening at the moment. That's inconveniencing a lot of people. And look, a lot of people will say, fine, I'll just work from home. What about the hospital porter who needs to get to work, the cleaner who needs to get to work? These people are being prevented from working by the union bosses who refuse to put the offer to their members, and that can't be right. The government is now calling on those still on strike to accept the deal other rail unions have agreed to, a 9% pay rise over two years with no compulsory redundancies. Some rail workers, members of the TSSA, have reached a settlement. Are you any closer? That's because that was a separate group of grades that have agreed their deal. Our members voted on that same deal and our members voted to reject the offer that had been made. Uh, we'll carry on talking and we really do want to get a deal, but that's going to be down to the companies and the government to agree that deal with the RMT. Around one in five trains have been running today, according to Network Rail. Jane Akera was hoping to get one of them to London so she can visit a client. What happens if you don't get to London today? Ah, if I don't get to London today, it's going to be very hard. My client need me and want to see me because they're in the hospital and I want to go to see them. I think the government should sort this out and think what to do instead of being strike all the time. A lack of trains has proved particularly costly for John and Kath from Solihull. They had tickets for a carol concert last night in Birmingham city centre and were determined to go. We decided the best bet was actually to, to, to book a hotel room. So we came on the bus, stayed in a hotel after the show, and now we're going back on the bus. A bit more expensive than planned, perhaps. <laughs> Only about 120 quid more, yeah. Disruption to train services is expected to continue up to and beyond Christmas with the head of Network Rail accusing the RMT of deliberately ruining Christmas for passengers and businesses. There seems little chance of an end to the discord between the two sides anytime soon.